From its humble beginnings in the garage to becoming a global tech powerhouse, Apple has consistently pushed the boundaries of what's possible, combining sleek product design with groundbreaking technology. With the latest news of its Vision Pro spatial computer, Apple has solidified itself as the tech industry leader for now and many years to come. Today, we're journeying to explore the remarkable history of the company's numerous innovations throughout the years. Here we go. To understand Apple's innovation, we have to start in the beginning back in 1976 when Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak co-founded Apple Computer Inc. in Jobs' family garage. The name Apple Computer was actually proposed by Jobs when he had just come back from a farm in Oregon. He had been on a fruitarian diet and thought the name Apple was fun, spirited, and not intimidating. Plus, it would get ahead of Atari in the phone book. Atari was one of the biggest tech companies at the time. Apple's first product was the Apple One, which was sold as an assembled circuit board and lacked basic features such as a keyboard, monitor, and case in July 1976. It did have some notable features, however, including the use of a TV display, whereas many machines had no display at all. About 200 units were eventually sold. But it wasn't until the release of the Apple II in 1977 that truly put Apple on the map. Almost as soon as Apple had started selling its first computers, Wozniak moved on from the Apple I and began designing the next generation product based on his belief that a personal computer should be small, reliable, convenient to use, and inexpensive. The Apple II went on sale on June 10, 1977 with a retail price $1,298. Yeah, inexpensive, right? The computer provided a completely redesigned TV interface, which held the display in memory. Now, not only useful for the simple text display, it included graphics and color. The Apple II was chosen to be the desktop platform for the first killer application of of the business world and went on to sell about 6 million units in total before it was discontinued in 1993. Following the success of the Apple II, Apple had its sights set on more in the corporate environment, aimed to compete with IBM for market share in the business and enterprise computing market. The Apple III was designed to do just that, but it failed to do so. It was released in November 1980 with a very expensive retail price ranging from $4,340 to $7,800. The computer was prone to overheating, causing the integrated circuit chips to disconnect from the motherboard. Thousands of Apple III computers were recalled and its brand took a hit. Then, a year later, the tech giant IBM entered the personal computer market with the IBM PC. IBM didn't want products without its logo on the consumer's desks. The PC surpassed Apple's computers in 1983 as the best-selling personal computer. IBM had $4 billion in annual PC revenue, more than twice what Apple had. A Fortune survey found that 56% of American companies with personal computers use IBM PCs compared to 16% for Apple. There was a division at Apple called the Lisa Group that worked on a new machine to feature a completely different interface and introduced the concept of a mouse, icons, windows, and menus. The Lisa was introduced in 1983 at a cost of a whopping $9,995. Because of this high price tag, the Lisa failed to penetrate the business market. But its concept of the graphical user interface would be the foundation for Apple's succeeding products and the entire computer market as a whole. In 1984, Apple introduced its famous Macintosh commercial during the third quarter of Super Bowl 18 on January 22nd, 1984, based on George Orwell's novel 1984. You've just seen some pictures of Macintosh. Now I'd like to show you Macintosh in person. The Macintosh went on sale two days later and featured two applications called MacWrite and MacPaint, which were designed to show off its graphical user interface that was based on the Lisa computer. It also introduced desktop publishing as a concept, as well as computer animation through Apple's partnership with Adobe Systems. This pushed Apple and the Macintosh to be the default platform for many creative industries such as filmmaking, music, and advertising. This revolutionary machine she brought computing to the masses and set the stage for Apple's future innovations. 
After multiple fights in the company's directions, both Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak left Apple. From 1985 to 1997, Apple went on to release more products, both successes and failures, while struggling with having the right leadership for the company to compete with the likes of Atari, IBM, Microsoft, and Motorola. Then, in 1997, Apple completed its acquisition of Steve Jobs' new company, Next, which Jobs returned to Apple and would become Apple's interim CEO. With Jobs as interim CEO, Apple partnered with Microsoft to bring Microsoft Office to the Macintosh, and Internet Explorer would ship as the Macintosh's default browser. Apple went on to launch the iMac computer, which combined sleek design, vibrant colors, and good user experience. It also released a new operating system called Mac OS X, which was based on Next's Next step and opened up retail stores to fight its declining shares in the computer market and its poor marketing and third-party retail outlets. In 2001, Apple expanded its footprint outside the desktop computer. It introduced the iPod, a portable music player that revolutionized the music industry. With its simple and elegant design, the company gave people an easy way to carry their entire music library in their pockets. Over the next decade, the iPod product line evolved into other products, including the iPod Mini, iPod Shuffle, iPod Nano, iPod Classic, and the iPod Touch. With the iPod came the iTunes Music Store where users could purchase music. Apple would eventually update this to be just the iTunes Store when it began offering video content as well. Music is a symphony of emotions, a beautiful escape, and a universal language that connects us. And the iPod made this portable and available to the consumer mass. Continuing off the success of a small portable device, in 2007, Apple introduced the iPhone. And well, we all know how this went. The iPhone combined a phone, an iPod, and an internet communicator into one tiny piece of hardware. It set a new standard for the smartphone and transformed the way we communicate, work, and interact with technology. With the iPhone came its own operating system called iOS along with the App Store. This platform allowed software developers to build and distribute their own applications, which created so many businesses, many of which we know and love today. In 2010, Apple unveiled a seemingly larger iPhone called the iPad. It's a tablet device that reimagined portable computing and created its own category of tablets. This was a product not many people knew they needed or wanted. It was a game changer for industries in education, filmmaking, graphic design, and even workplace productivity. This was the last product that Apple introduced before Steve Jobs' passed away in 2011 due to pancreatic cancer. In 2014, Apple introduced the Apple Watch, the first product launched under Tim Cook's leadership and since Steve Jobs' departure. It's a sophisticated blend of technology, fashion, and functionality that sits elegantly on your wrist. While it faced much criticism at first for lacking a clear purpose, it has since won the hearts of many consumers and proven itself to be a notable revenue-generating product for Apple. Equipped with an array of sensors and health tracking capabilities that monitor your heart rate, track your physical activity, and even analyze your sleep patterns, the watch goes far beyond just telling time. It's a smart companion that seamlessly integrates into your daily life. In the early 2010s, Apple's MacBooks began dominating the tech industry with almost every tech startup buying one for its employees. Praised for its elegant design, powerful performance, top-notch security measures, and great user experience, the MacBook has been loved by many. This paved way for various lineups in the product, including the MacBook, MacBook Air, and the MacBook Pro. Up until 2020, Apple had a strong partnership with Intel that provided it with Intel chips for its MacBook products. This was actually a strategic move for Apple Apple, and they could learn from Intel how to best create processors so that it could eventually cut them out and create its own chips, which Apple did. Apple launched Apple Silicon for its MacBook and iPad products, which drastically improved their performances. MacBooks have become the preferred computer for designers, engineers, and creators. 
In the late 2010s, Apple launched AirPods, the HomePod, and AirTags. AirPods are wireless earbuds that have transformed the way we experience audio. Their sleek design and seamless connectivity have made them become a cultural phenomenon, redefining the way we listen to music, take calls, and interact with our devices. The HomePod was released in 2018 and is a smart speaker designed to work with Apple Music. This honestly hasn't reached mass consumer adoption the way Apple had hoped. In 2021, Apple launched AirTags, which are tracking devices designed to act as a key finder, which helps people find personal objects. Apple is just as good with its software as it is with its hardware. Known for its blue bubbles, Apple has seamlessly integrated its products and services into our daily lives with its ecosystem. Some notable software include Messages, FaceTime, Camera, Photos, Notes, Wallet, Apple Pay, Weather, Maps, Safari, App Store, iCloud, and AirDrop. At the heart of Apple's products is iCloud, a cloud-based service that securely stores your personal data, documents, photos, videos, passwords, and and more, making them accessible across all your Apple devices. With iCloud, you can effortlessly sync your contacts, calendars, notes, files, messages, and photos, ensuring that your information is always up to date and readily available regardless of which Apple device you're using. Today, I'm excited to announce a fairly new AR platform with a revolutionary new product. And here it is. At WWDC 23 in June, Apple unveiled its highly anticipated AR VR headset, the Vision Pro, dubbed as the next era of spatial computing. The Vision Pro seamlessly blends digital content with your physical space. You navigate simply with your eyes, hands, and voice. There is no controller, which is contrary to all of its competitors. This is a start of the next era of technology where we're fully immersed in our digital content within the physical world. This is so exciting as Apple has really pushed the bar very high for mixed reality experiences. Apple's history of innovation is awe-inspiring from the Apple One to the revolutionary Macintosh, iPod, iPhone, iPad, and now the Vision Pro. It's redefined technology. Apple's commitment to design, technology, and accessibility makes its products more than tools. They're companions sources of inspiration and catalysts for change. With each release, Apple seems to anticipate and fulfill our needs, empowering us to be creative and connected. As we look to the future, Apple's unwavering commitment to pushing boundaries ensures transformative advancements to come and its legacy of innovation will continue to shape our world. That's the end of the video. I'm Lauren from Darkman Digest where I talk about the most exciting insights in the tech industry. So if you enjoy this content, Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.